Today we're going to talk about inverse of functions. When you think of the word inverse, you might think back to solving equations when it says something like x plus 2 equals 4, you subtract 2, because addition and subtraction are inverse operations. Multiplication and division are inverse operations. A lot of times we call those opposite op operations, so maybe the word inverse brings up the word opposite in your mind. If you were to type in your calculator sine and input 30, if you're in degrees mode, you would get an output of 0 0.5. But if you were to type in inverse sine, that would be second sine, and your input is 0 0.5, you're going to get an output of 30 degrees. So what inverse does is it switches the input and the output. So an inverse switches the input and the output. So let's look at example one. For the function f of x equals x squared. So that means whatever our input is, we're going to square it. Negative 3 squared, negative 2 squared, negative 1 squared, 0 squared, 1 squared, 2 squared, and 3 squared. And we'll graph each point and plot this function. We'll do it in solid. We'll do the inverse dotted. 0, 0, 1, 1, and negative 1, 1, 2, 4, and negative 2, 4, 3, 9, and negative 3, 9. So that's a parabola. The f inverse of x, this right here, means the inverse. Just means that we switch the inputs and the outputs. So each point, the x and y value get reversed. So when we graph the inverse, it's all the x and y values reversed. So we have 0, 0, 1, negative 1, and 1, 1, 4, negative 2, and 4, 2, 9, negative 3, and 9, 3. So we'll dot in the graph of the inverse. Now, this should remind you of the symmetry test for symmetry about y equals x, because for that test, we switch the x and the y, because for every point x, y, the point y, x also exists when there's symmetry about the y-axis. And if we draw in a line y equals x, we should see that the original function and its inverse are symmetric about y equals x. So that y equals x is a line of reflection. On this original function, f of x equals x squared, there's no place I can draw a vertical line and touch it twice. So this is a function. But on the inverse, if I draw a vertical line, I can draw one that touches it two times. So the question is that inverse a function? The answer is no, it is not a function. Example two, find the inverse of the function y equals 2x minus 6. Before we do that, let's graph y equals 2x minus 6. It's got a y-intercept of negative 6. So we plot that y-intercept. 
It's got a slope of 2, so it goes up 2 and over 1. And we'll plot as many of those as we can, so we make sure we maintain our slope. So there's y equals 2x minus 6. To find the inverse, what we need to do is switch the input and the output. So we have x equals 2y minus 6. And we're going to solve that for y in order to find the inverse. So we're going to move that 6 over to the other side. It becomes x plus 6 equals 2y. And we're going to divide both sides by 2. So I have y equals x plus 6 over 2, but I'm going to try to graph this, so I'll put it in slope-intercept form. x over 2 is 1 half x plus 6 over 2 is 3 equals y. So I have a y-intercept of 3. and a slope of one half. So I'm going to go up one and over two and fill in as many of those as I can on the graph. And I'll dot the inverse. In this case, in the original function, there's nowhere I can draw a line that touches twice, so it is a function. There's no place I can draw a vertical line that touches this one twice either. So is the inverse here a function? The answer is yes. So the inverse sometimes will be a function, sometimes it will not be a function. And we should notice again if I put in the line y equals x, that's a line of reflection. So anytime I draw a function and its inverse, we should notice that it is symmetric about y equals x. Example three, we are going to graph the function p of x equals x cubed. So if I start plugging in some inputs, I put in zero, zero cubed is zero, one cubed is one, two cubed is eight, negative one cubed is negative one, and negative two cubed is negative eight. I'm going to dot this one because my answer on the graph is going to be after the transformations. So if p of x is x cubed, then p inverse of x is going to be the cube root of x, which means this right here is the inverse. So our first transformation is the inverse. That means we're going to flip the graph over the line y equals x, which also means every point x, y is going to become y, x. So the point 0, 0, I'm going to turn that around and it's still going to be 0, 0. 1, 1 is going to stay 1, 1. Negative 1, negative 1 is going to stay where it is. Then the point 2, 8, when I turn that around, I'm going to get 8, 2. And the point negative 2, negative 8 is going to become negative 8, negative 2. So here it is after the first transformation. If we draw in the line y equals x, 
we should be able to see that the two are symmetric about y equals x. So that's the graph of the inverse. But there are two more transformations. Inside the function is a minus 2, so the second transformation is that this graph shifts right two units. And then outside the transformation is plus 3, outside the function is plus 3, so the next transformation is that it shifts up three units. So I can take each coordinate on this inverse and move it two to the right and three up. And that will be the final graph of this function. Example four, given f of x equals 5x minus 7, find f inverse of x. We're going to find the inverse. f of x equals is the same as saying y equals. It's just in function notation. In order to find the inverse, I'm going to switch my input and my output. So I'm going to have five, or I'm going to have x equals 5y minus 7, and I'm going to solve for y. So I'm going to move that 7 to the left x plus 7 equals 5y. And then I'm going to divide both sides by 5. Now I'm not graphing this, so I really don't care if it looks like slope-intercept form. So y equals x plus 7 over 5 is OK. But for my final answer, I'm going to go back to function notation like it was in the beginning. f inverse of x equals x plus 7 over 5. So that's my inverse, but before I put a box around it and say it's definitely true, I am going to verify that the original function and what I just found are inverses of each other. And here's how you do that. To determine if that truly is an inverse, I have to evaluate f of what I'm saying is the inverse of x which means I'm evaluating f of x plus 7 over 5. And what that really means is I'm taking that x plus 7 over 5, and I'm going to plug it in right there for x, and then simplify it. So 5 times, and then the x becomes the inverse, x plus 7 over 5 and then I still have a minus 7. But this is 5 over 1 times x plus 7 over 5, and those 5s do cancel. So I get x plus 7 minus 7. Plus 7 minus 7 cancels. So I'm left with x. So f of the inverse of x equals x. Or we can think of it like this, y equals x. And there should be symmetry about the line y equals x. So if I can simplify down to just an x, that tells me my inverse is correct. Now that verifying kind of has a lot to it up here. So to put it in maybe some simpler terms, in order to verify it, I take what I find here and plug it in here. That put me on this line. After just a couple steps of simplifying, I got down to nothing but an x. That verifies for me that my inverse is correct. Go ahead and pause the video for a moment and try this last problem. So this is my y, and I need to switch the x and the y in order to find the inverse. So x equals 1 half y plus 3 eighths. 
Now I need to solve for y. So I'm going to move this 3 eighths to the other side. x minus 3 eighths equals 1 half y. To eliminate that one-half, I can divide by one-half. Probably the easier way is to multiply by the reciprocal. So I'm going to multiply both sides by two, and that will cancel out that one-half for me. And then I'll distribute this two. 2x, and this is two over one. So two over one times negative three-eighths is negative six over eight. which is 3 fourths. Back in function notation, f inverse of x equals 2x minus 3 fourths. And I'm going to plug that inverse into the original function and see if it can simplify down to x. And if it does, then I know that this is correct. So 1 half times the inverse 2x minus 3 fourths plus 3 eighths. We'll distribute the half. 1 half times 2 is 1, so 1x minus half times 3 fourths is 3 eighths plus 3 eighths. Minus 3 eighths plus 3 eighths cancels. I'm down to just an x, which tells me that what I decided was my inverse is correct.